what's up guys, it's Graphic Phoenix back with another video today, and today I'm showing you guys how I make my own personal homemade fruit fly media. Now as you know, I've been getting more into dart frogs recently, and it is important that I make my own media because the super fly you see in the background gets pretty expensive. It does work very, very well. Uh, Rapashi certainly knows what they're doing when it comes to making powdered diets and breeding materials and stuff like that, but... <laughs> This is the easiest option for me. I'll go through exactly how you do it and exactly what you'll need for your fruit fly cultures. So with the base materials, you're gonna want 32 ounce containers. This is pretty standard across everywhere. Uh, most people just use default 32 ounce containers. Uh, you can reuse them, you just rinse them, take out all the old media, rinse them again, and bam, you got as many as you made. In order to cover the 32 ounce containers you will require some special lids. These are basically just 32 ounce container lids with like a cotton, I believe it's cotton, polyester, I don't know, on the bottom to to allow air exchange but keep all the insects and the larva on the inside. Now breaking down the actual media itself, I have brewer's yeast, cultures, which look like this. That's a bag of brewer's yeast. You can typically get brewer's yeast or most yeasts, including the nutritional yeast, which is like this flake stuff that I use in the other culture. Uh, at I got it at, it's called Community Foods here in Calgary, but you can get it pretty much anywhere. Um, like health food stores typically will carry this in their bulk section, and you don't use a lot of this. For one box of the potato flakes, which is what you use in the actual media, or instant mashed potatoes, you use approximately like a quarter cup to maybe a half cup, depending on the mixture of yeast, whether that's brewer's yeast or nutritional yeast. And then I use a half cup of icing sugar, which is typical, just standard icing sugar. And I mix it up in these separate containers. The reason why they're separate is because there's different yeast. This is brewer's yeast. As I said earlier, this is nutritional yeast. So two separate things, two separate boxes. Makes it very easy to keep track of. In the media itself, there's three products that I use, or three ingredients that I use besides the actual fruit fly media itself. I use cinnamon as a anti-mold. It basically has properties in it that kill mold or prevent it from growing. So that's important. I'll show you exactly how that is used later. I use spirulina, which the larva will eat. Um, I just use a tiny, tiny little bit of this, maybe like a quarter teaspoon or less per tub. I don't actually measure it. And then about the same amount of paprika, maybe a half teaspoon, something like that for this. A little bit more, but not substantial. That's all the ingredients. So now that we have what's in the actual medias themselves, we can do what's on the inside of the medias. And I use Excelsior, which is, I don't know exactly what, I think it's some sort of plant material. And then there is uh, coffee filters, which both work very, very well. Um, you can use one or the other or both, like I do. And the reason why you add this kind of thing is just to give more surface area so the flies and the larvae have more places to hide, more places to grow, and more places to walk so they don't trample each other. It's important to provide those for them. Now, for the actual containers themselves, you're going to need hot water, which you see in the back there, and a measuring cup. I use a half cup of my homemade media and a quarter cup of the super fly in the back there. I still have to add the nutritional one. This right here is all brewer's yeast and the one I'm about to do is nutritional. And for the super fly there's specific a uh, requirements. It is about three quarters of a cup of boiling water or very hot water to mix into this. And then these, I use about the same amount, but it's just more texture. So I'm gonna do that right now, and you guys can watch to see what the texture I typically like is. And you can be the judges for yourself. So I'm just gonna throw in some music right now. Uh, I will.
All right, so that was mixing up all the cultures. Now they are all made. Um, three are on camera, kind of, and then the other two are off to the side. But right now, I'm just going to show you how I set up one of them, just so you guys can see and not be super, super tedious with my method. Let's get started. So basically what I do is just tap some cinnamon on there. And I put probably more than you actually need to, but I'd rather not have mold than have mold. The layer of cinnamon is on there, and now you see why I add the cinnamon. I will be experimenting with adding vinegar with the water instead of cinnamon and just cut out the cinnamon, see if any mold grows, anything like that. I'll test it out and let you guys know in a future video. So next what I do is I basically grab one coffee filter, fold into a triangle, pinch the bottom, and then just kind of frill it out a little bit. Then I stick it in the fruit fly media. I'll typically do two coffee filters per container. And you guys want to twist the bottom so it has kind of like a spike to go into the media. I find that works the best. And then I use just a tiny amount of Excelsior. Sorry for all the bags rattling. So once I'm finished with the coffee filters, I grab a small bit of Excelsior in that extra space there. Push it down so it goes a little bit into the media, and there you have it. You have a homemade fruit fly culture. I let this sit to cool down for probably four or five hours before I actually add flies. Um, in my case, I always let the lids rest on top because I have uh, fungus gnats and other fruit flies just kind of putzing about in my room, and I don't want any of them to get in here because then that kind of messes up all my plans and I'll either have fungus gnats breeding or I'll have random fruit flies of I don't know what breeding in here. That's how you set up a fruit fly culture. Super easy, super simple. I hope this helps some people out. I know that it took me quite a while to find some good recipes. Um, a lot of people are extremely basic. Of course, I like to add a little bit of flair with the paprika and the spirulina to mine. I don't know how much that exactly does. I know some people just use like straight potato flakes and icing sugar. That works if that works for you. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said earlier, I hope it helps some of you guys out. If you made it this far into the video, drop a like down below and leave in the comments section the word culture. As well as any questions, comments, concerns, I answer them all if you're able to be answered. If you like these kind of videos for more frog, reptile, and sometimes shrimp related videos, Subscribe to my channel and you will not be disappointed. Anyways guys, have a great